According to the Craik and Lockhart levels of processing framework, there are three types or three levels of encoding, visual, phonemic and Starting with visual encoding, look at the example at the bottom. Which of the following words are in uppercase? We visually scan the images in front of us and clearly we can see that it is in fact the second option, parietal, that is the one in uppercase. So this type of encoding is merely concerned with the appearance of the stimuli or the physical features. And we're using maintenance re rehearsal here by trying to basically retain that visual information in our short-term memory, which leads to the formation of a fragile memory trace, which is highly susceptible to, de to rapid decay. Um, thus, it's considered a shallow form of processing. And interestingly enough, visual encoding is largely responsible of the brain structure, the amygdala, in the, in the medial temporal lobe. Moving on to phonemic encoding, and we'll start with the example down the bottom, which of the following words rhymes with life. So not only do we visually scan the words, but we sound out the four, four words, bat, knife, play and door, and we can clearly hear by the sound that knife does in fact rhyme with life. So this form of encoding is concerned not only with the appearance, but also the sound. And even though many researchers regard this as a shallow form of processing, because it is in fact still using maintenance rehearsal by simply trying to retain it in our STM, short-term memory, longer, rather than using elaborate rehearsal, which we'll talk about later. So, it, But it does in fact um, provide a higher rate of recall um, based on numerous research studies that have been conducted than, of course, the visual method. So moving to semantic encoding. So again, we'll start with the sentence down the bottom here. Which of the following words goes in this sentence? After school, I need to catch either the iPad, shoe, train, or money home. Well, clearly, in order for the sentence to make sense, we must insert the word train in the sentence. So this type of method, semantic encoding, is concerned with the meaning of the word. And thus, we're using the elaborative rehearsal technique by linking the word to an existing long-term memory. So what we're doing is we are encoding the meaning of the word and relating it to words with a similar meaning in our long-term memory, creating a more meaningful analysis by associating the information with our existing understanding of vocabulary, etc. So we're creating a more durable memory trace that is less prone or less susceptible to decay and resulting in the highest rate of recall as opposed to uh, the phonemic and visual encoding method. So in terms of some of the strengths of the Craig and Lockhart model, and it's a good idea when highlighting strengths and weaknesses to provide a basis for comparison, so in this case the atkinson Schifrin memory model. So the Craig and Lockhart model accounts for the manner in which information is transferred from short-term memory to long-term memory as opposed to the AS model. And it does in fact explain why some things are retained better and longer than other information. And it highlights the importance of the use of elaborative rehearsal in enhancing our memory. In terms of the weaknesses, well, is it the actual depth of processing or the level of mental of effort required in the actual encoding process that leads to the superior retention um, given that we can't objectively measure the depth of processing this remains unclear.